always serving a fresh cup of daily inspiration, Deanna Hobbs. Today's inspiration is to remind you to get your faith up. Now, if you came for the podcast yesterday, then you will have noticed that I did not get to broadcast. I was feeling a bit under the weather, but I'm so happy to have you here today. If this is your first time listening, my name is Deanna Hobbs. I am the founder of Empowering Everyday Women Ministries. And daily, I come to this forum Monday through Friday and share inspiration that the Lord places on my heart. So I want to get started with a prayer, and then we'll get into today's inspiration. God, I thank you for this special time of sharing and how you privilege us to hear from you and to receive from your word. As we sit at your feet, waiting to eat from your table, I ask that you will rain manna from heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us what we need to sustain us, to strengthen us, and to help us keep on moving and pressing toward purpose that you have preordained for our lives. And we thank you In Jesus' name, amen. Well, the Hobbs family usually has interesting random discussions at dinner, and the Hobbs family discussed woodpeckers at the dinner table last evening, thanks to our oldest son, Kadar, who's pretty fascinated with nature. Known for his spontaneous exploration of random topics, he chose to start a discussion about how a woodpecker does all that pecking without breaking its beak. Our ever-inquisitive 12-year-old grew even more curious about this bird species as the conversation went on, so after dinner, he decided to do a bit of research and announced to all of us the primary reasons for the rat-a-tat-tat sound a woodpecker makes on trees. It pecks to mark its territory, attract a mate, create a nest, and gain access to food, larvae, and insects like ants that live in trees. A woodpecker pecks thousands of times daily, drilling holes in wood. The woodpecker doesn't stop pecking until it reaches the bugs needed for the nourishment. That takes persistence, right? Even though this fowl can't see anything when it first starts pecking, it instinctively knows where to go for food. That got me to thinking about how birds and animals don't worry about finding provision. Even if there are no signs of what they're searching for, they don't go into a panic. They know that God-given supply is there every single day. How much better off would we be if we had confidence that God would meet our needs despite the absence of physical evidence? Matthew 6 and 26 in the New International Version says, Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Since the Word of God assures us of our divine worth and God's faithfulness to care for us, why do we get all anxious, stressed, and panicky over what we don't see? The Lord doesn't want us to get all worried and upset. He wants us to remain calm and confident even when there is no sign. You see, He has already declared promises in His Word, so then, despite your problems, you can rest assured that a shift is coming. Your circumstances must align with what He said. They have no choice. In John 4 and 46 through 54, we meet a government official from Capernaum whose son was at the point of death. When this concerned dad heard Jesus was nearby in Cana of Galilee, about 15 miles away, he went out to meet him. Cana, as John points out, is the exact place Jesus had performed his first miracle by turning water into wine at a wedding in chapter 2. It was his hometown, so the folks here knew all about Jesus' signs and wonders. He was was known as a miracle worker, even though, according to John 4 and 44, Jesus was a prophet with no honor in his own country. Residents were aware that he had supernatural power, but they didn't worship him as Messiah, Savior of the world. That's why when the nobleman begged Jesus to heal his son, Jesus replied in verse 48, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. I want you to note here that Jesus used a plural form of you here when addressing all those who were in awe of his miracles, but didn't really believe in him. The official who was desperate for God to heal his son answered Jesus by simply pleading again in verse 49, saying, sir, come down before my child dies. But Jesus didn't agree to go with the man. Instead, the savior said, go your way. Your son lives with no sign, no evidence, no way of physically verifying the condition of his son. The Bible says the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and he went on his way. 
That's what I want you to get. So let me reiterate. The father believed the word that Jesus spoke with no physical evidence. He trusted that it was true. This is the kind of faith God wants from you and me. The question is, will you believe sight unseen? Well, when this relieved dad asked about the exact hour when his son got better, his servant told him yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him somewhere around noon. The Bible lets us know this was confirmation that his son's circumstances shifted at precisely the moment when Jesus spoke the word. The deliverance was instantaneous, though the father had no sign. Isn't that awesome? When God speaks, circumstances shift. Friend, God wants to get you to a place in your walk with him where you will confidently rely on his promises despite what the evidence says. For someone listening to this podcast, the Lord has already spoken a word over your situation. He says you're here. The way is already made. The door is open. The position is yours. The favor has been given to you. The access has been granted. The relationship is restored. Your womb is open. The provision belongs to you. Yet you have no physical proof that anything has changed. Nevertheless, it is done. How can you know? Because God said so. Be like this father in John 4. You can clearly see in scripture that his situation looked bad, right? His son was on his deathbed, but with just one word, without even coming Coming to the man's house, a miracle happened. A miracle is happening for you too. God has declared it. Believe it. Get your faith up. Elevate your level of expectation. Start rejoicing right now. Declare that it's done. God is challenging you to trust him even when you can't trace him. To help you do that, I'm stirring Hebrews 11:6 in the New International Version into your cup of inspiration, which says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists exist and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. As you drink down the contents of your cup, get your faith up. Place your hope in our unfailing God. Just like that woodpecker begins pecking, fully expecting provision, sight unseen, you've got to know that the same God that feeds the birds will take care of you. No matter how bad it looks, declare that it's all right. It is well. It is done. It is worked out. I'm agreeing with you right now that things have shifted in your favor because God has spoken. Even if you don't see it yet, decree that your turnaround has come. Now let's pray. God, I pray for this, my sister, this, my brother. Thank you that your word is true, that your promises are unfailing. I believe your word and I praise you on their behalf for their miracle, for their breakthrough, even before it manifests. And God, even though they may not see the way, help them to trust not in their circumstances, but in your word and your power to perform it. By faith, we declare that what they need is already provided in Jesus name. Amen. Your daily cup of inspiration podcast has been brought to you by empowering everyday women ministries, where we help fuel your faith every day. For more information, log on to www.deannahobbs.com. 